possible this morning that we can walk with God? Is it possible that we can get up and we can go to school or we can go to work tomorrow morning and we can walk with God? Can we really walk with God? I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We continue to make our way through this wonderful book. It's rich with God's Word this morning, and I want you to find chapter 11 where we're going to begin reading at verse number 5 here in just a moment. I want us to look today at the life of Enoch. We're going to look at Enoch and how he was a man who walked with God. You too can walk with God this morning. I hope you know that. So read with me uh, Hebrews 11, beginning in verse 5. By faith, key word, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. I ask your blessing upon it this morning as we look at this idea that we can walk with you. Bless this time together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 has often been called God's hall of faith. It's listed uh, many people in there that, that were people and characters of faith throughout God's word. You know, it's one thing, though, to, to have a definition of something. Don't you love when you go to the dictionary? Have you ever went to the dictionary and, and you're looking for a word and, and you come to this word and it gives you another word that you don't know what means and then you go look at that word and then it gives you the other word you just looked at and it's like this circular thing. You're trying to figure out what it means. It's one thing to have a definition of faith. It's another thing for, for a demonstration of what faith does. And so the author of Hebrews this morning, he, he shows us through the life of people what faith does. You know, it, it's, um, it's kind of as if this morning the author of Hebrews knew, knew our personality a little bit. That we would, we would need something more than just a definition. We would need examples. How many of you need examples? How many of you are kind of visual learners? You need something to kind of show you more than just tell you. And so he, he goes through these lives and he reaches back to the Old Testament. And last week we looked at Abel and how that, that through the life of Abel, he said, this is what faith does. Faith worships God. And this morning he, he, he says that through the life of Enoch, through Enoch's life, we learn this about faith. Faith, not only does it worship God, Faith also walks with God. I told you last week, if you're not worshiping God, if you're not actively involved in the act of worshiping God, then you're not living by faith. This morning, if you're not walking with God, if you're not spending time in fellowship with God, it's because you are lacking in your faith. Look what the Bible says in verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated... Logic would tell you this morning that this really is the end of his life. There's a whole life before this in the life of Enoch. And so I want you to go back to Genesis chapter 5 in your Bible for a little bit this morning. And we're going to look at Enoch. There's more to, more to the life of Enoch than just the conclusion, just the idea that he walked with God. There's also the idea that he was translated and brought up into the very presence of God. What a wonderful story this is. And so the question this morning is, how can we as individuals walk with God? When you come to Genesis chapter 5, it's something very unusual about it. There's something very unique about this chapter. In the fifth chapter of Genesis, it, Genesis, it is this. It is, and he died, and he died, and he died. Over and over, I think if I counted correctly, eight times, and he died. So when you open the book of Genesis chapter 5, it's 
But Lynn, it's as if you're in the funeral home scene and you can hear the, the, the bells of, of the funeral home ring as it's time to lay somebody to rest. You can see the sorrow. You can see the pain. You can see the death and the families and, and the surrounding of those in this death chapter of Genesis chapter 5. And he died. You know what this proves to you and I this morning? It's a, it's a proof text that God's word is true. You remember Adam and Eve? They were there in the garden. There's Adam and Eve. And they're uh, there and God comes to Adam and Eve and he says, you remember what he said? He says, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall what? Surely die. And he died. And they died. But in this fifth chapter of Genesis, there's an exception and it goes something like this. And he died. And he died. And then it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God. How do we do that? How do we walk with God on a daily basis? And I want to give you three truths this morning of how we walk with God as an implication from the text how we live and how we walk with God. The first one is this. Walking with God starts with salvation. Amen. Jeffrey, I need you to hold up a sign because I don't have a TV back there to look at. <laughs> Tell me when I need to go to the next point. Now, Enoch walked with God, but he didn't always walk with God. He wasn't always with God. There was a time when Enoch did not walk with God. There was a beginning, there was a commencement or a genesis of the time that Enoch began to walk with God. Where was that, Miss Tina? It was when he accepted Jesus, when he put his faith in Christ and he was saved. Walking with God begins with our salvation. If you're not saved, you're not walking with God. It's a fundamental principle of walking with God. You know, some would argue this morning that... Eh, if I could have lived when Enoch lived, then I could have walked with God. If I could have just lived, you know, when, when politics wasn't such a big deal, I could have walked with God. Or if I could have, you know, just spent time with God, things would have been different. I could have walked with God. Let me tell you this morning, though, Enoch lived in a very pagan environment. There was a bunch of bloodthirsty pagans in the time of Enoch. It was not a pretty scene. It was not an easy time to live. There was uh, paganism. There was idolatry. It was rich in the land of Israel. But he was still one that walked with God. And you can live in a culture today that we live in, and you too can walk with God. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of our culture, regardless of who was elected president, you can live and you can still walk with God. <clears throat> but here's the key. First, you've got to know Him as your Father. You've got to put your faith and your trust in Jesus. You've got you to put your faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had a saving experience. You know what? The reality is, Enoch was saved just like everybody else is saved. He was saved like we're saved today, by grace and through faith in Jesus Christ. He wasn't baptized into salvation. He didn't join a church into salvation. He didn't do a bunch of religious deeds and get saved. He was saved by faith and through the grace of Jesus Christ this morning. You know what the Bible says in the book of Amos chapter 3? <clears throat> the Bible asks this question. It says in, in Amos chapter 3 verse 3, it says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Brother David, you're married. You can answer this question, can't you, this morning? Can two walk together except they be agreed? You can live together and not be in agreement. You can... Uh, fight and bicker and all of those things, but you cannot, uh, you cannot live, as it says, you cannot walk together except you be agreed. You know what the answer to that question is? What's the answer to that question, Miss Linda? You know the answer? If, if, if you have any kind of interpersonal relationships in your life, you know the answer to this. That 
This is God asking this question, by the way, in Amos. He's asking the question, can two walk together except they be agreed? I want to help you understand that. You've got the, the, the God of Israel, this thrice holy God of Israel. And then you have Jeffrey, who is wicked, who is sinful, who is depraved, who is evil. He's estranged from God. He's separated from God. Can we walk together with that God? God's too holy. God's too righteous. We can never walk with that God until, first of all, we are saved and we have salvation. Amen. Enoch believed on the Lord and he was saved. In order to walk with God, and you can, you can walk with God, but in order to walk with Him, you've got to be on the same pace with God. You've got to be going the same direction with God. You must be saved. Secondly, walking with God results in sanctification. You can walk with God, but you can't live any old way you want to live. I think we've got a culture that, that believes that today. You just live any way you want to live and it'll be fine. If you're going to walk with God, and, and I say it again, you can walk with God. You should walk with God. But you've got to do it God's way. It's not just some way that I dream up one night that I want to live. It's not just the popular way to live. If you want to serve God and walk with God, you've got to do it God's way. Enoch lived a life of separation unto the Lord. He was separated from the world, but he was separated unto God. What is it that God requires of you and I this morning? You know what the book of Micah says? He says it's not beating yourself into subjection. He says it's not giving great, big, large offerings. He says in Micah chapter 6 that we should walk humbly before the Lord, your God. What does God want? What does God expect out of me? That we would walk humbly before Him. And I want to show you three areas, real quickly, three areas in which you can walk humbly before the Lord. How do we live separated? How do we live a sanctified life? We live in a very uh, pagan culture today. We don't live in a very godly nation anymore. It's continuously declining. How do we live a separated life? First, I think it first of all begins with devotion. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we've got to have our sins confessed before God. You cannot have a barrier between you and God of sin and expect to walk with God. You've got to have that taken care of. You've got to have those issues taken care of.